What are the Lions going to do at 29? We ask an expert, Ryan McChrystal, with us today. You are Locked On Lions, your daily Detroit Lions podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's happening, everybody? Matt Derry with you. It is Locked On Lions right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day on a Tuesday, April 16th, and a Wednesday, April 17th, inching closer to the NFL Draft. We are less than two weeks away. We're about a week away. If you're talking about two days from now on Thursday, Ryan McChrystal is with us as Ryan works for Sharp Football uh, uh, Analysis. We love Warren Sharp. We've had Warren on the show before. Ryan does a great job for Sharp Football as well. First and foremost, we're brought to you today by our friends at the Game Time app. Used it this weekend to buy tickets for Pacers Hawks. I was down there uh, on the Sunday. Go to Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account. Use code LOCKEDONNFL for $20 off your first purchase. You can follow us on Twitter at Dairy Speaks, at Lockdown Lions, Matt Dairy Facebook fan page. And shout out to all of you that subscribe and watch on our Locked On Lions YouTube channel. The pride of Hawken High School in beautiful Cleveland, Ohio. Ryan McChrystal with us from uh, Sharp Football. What's up, Ryan? What's up? Thanks for having me. Good to see you, my friend. Uh, thanks for uh, for coming on. Your, your your thoughts on, first of all, before we get to the Lions, drafts less than, like we said, about a week and a half away here. Um, how do you feel? Do you think it'll be crazy? Do you think all these teams are going to go too crazy for quarterbacks? How do, how do you kind of view what's going to take place a week from Thursday? Yeah, it's going to be really fun. I mean, this is kind of like my favorite type of draft to cover because we've got so many quarterbacks in the conversation. Obviously, we feel pretty good about the fact that, you know, the quarterbacks are going to go one, two, three, most likely. But having, you know, JJ McCarthy in the mix somewhere in the top 10 to 12 picks, probably. And then, you know, maybe Knicks and Penix also in the mix in the first round somewhere. It, it adds so much excitement to have big name quarterbacks in the conversation because it just draws in so many more people in these years, you know, viewership is up. There's more conversation around it. So th this is my favorite type of draft to cover. And we've got a lot of quarterbacks and the receivers, a lot of big name receivers too, that creates a lot of excitement from those who don't follow the draft as deep most years, but you know, the fantasy football positions certainly drive added interest in a year like this. Oh, there's no question about it. And obviously here locally with JJ, you know, everybody here seems to love him, and there are mixed reviews on him, but it, it sounds like really this draft is going to take a weird turn once he goes, once somebody trades up for him. I know Peter Schrager of the Giants today in his mock draft trading up for him. What are your thoughts on McCarthy? Yeah, he's the one of the toughest evaluations in this class just because that Michigan offense, for good reason, really dialed down the passing attack and didn't let him show a whole lot. And it worked for them, right? They won a national championship, so we can't question them. But it, it, it potentially hurt his draft stock. I think if he were in an offense, even if he played on a worse team, but just an offense that asked more of him, it's possible we would be talking him right there in the mix with those top three guys that are expected to come off the board, one, two, three. And, you know, there's there's some talk that he might be in that mix. But I, I think if he were asked to do more, there's a chance – that he would be more legitimately in that conversation. But the flip side of that is if he were asked to do more, if he were asked to carry the, to put the team on his back more often, you know, would we have seen more mistakes from him? Like we saw when he did get the offense to open up a little bit more like that Bowling Green game certainly comes to mind where he threw those three interceptions, at least two, two of which were probably his fault. And so they just didn't ask him to do a whole lot in the biggest games, like the Ohio state game and the Penn state game, the two biggest regular season games. Those two games combined, he only threw four passes at 10 or more yards downfield. So they just weren't asking him to make those critical decisions in those types of games. And so I, I'm, I, I like him. I certainly see the ceiling. But when there's that doubt, when we haven't seen him in those big positions have to make those downfield decisions and sit in the pocket as often as some other quarterbacks, it, it just it makes him a more risky pick. That's, that's all it does. Lions, of course, are back in Allen Park this week for a voluntary workout. So the offseason program uh, is underway. The team will pick 29th. We think they'll pick 29th Thursday night of the draft. That's what's interesting, Ryan. I was having a conversation with Bradford Banta today, the former Lion. He and I uh, had lunch today, and, and we both were like, what if with all these fans down in Detroit and the place packed and everybody's so excited, and here comes the Lions on the clock, and Brad Holmes decides, all right, I got about 15 or 16 first round grades on players. They're all gone. I'll just trade back. That'll kind of be, be a, a kind of a, a, you know, I'm not saying a death blow, but it'll definitely 
fans will be like, oh man, I came all the way down here for us not to pick. But on the other hand, maybe something Brad Holmes is forced to do. When you look at 29, do you see a scenario where he trades out of that, accumulates some picks for day two and, and can still get players that he wants there? Yeah, I think that's a very likely scenario. I wouldn't say likely, but it's a very plausible scenario. They're a tough team to figure out what they're going to do because, you know, I, I feel like I have a pretty good sense of what Brad Holmes is looking for. Like if you ask me at a specific position, like the types of players are looking at, you know, and most positions, I feel like I have a good sense of that because obviously you know, he's been in Detroit for a few years now, had a really long tenure with Les Snead with the Rams. We, we've seen a, a large body of work there to get a good feel for the types of players they like. But when you're a team that's right on the cusp of a championship, that's when you're most likely to stray away from your core draft philosophies because you tend to feel like you're one piece away, maybe. So they, they could do that. You know, like drafting a cornerback in the first round is not something that I would think Brad Holmes would do. But do they think they're one piece away and they need one of these guys? That, that seems plausible this year where I wouldn't project them to take a cornerback in most years. But the flip side of that is looking at, at the future and all the players that they have to pay coming up, some of them this year, some of them the following year, they got to spend a lot of money. So trading down from that spot at 29, accumulating a couple extra picks. And we know that Holmes go, going back to his days with the Rams, they really value later round picks and the ability to bring in a bunch of those cheap rookie contracts to fill out your roster, knowing that you got a lot of, you got a lot of big contracts coming up on the books that you got to pay in the next couple of years, you know, adding some of those later round picks, you know, just accumulating more of those cheap contracts right now, mm. that could also be something that they're thinking about. That won't necessarily help them right now, but would be a very prudent move for 2025, 2026 seasons. That's an interesting way of putting it. Uh, Ryan McChrystal with us, analyst for uh, Sharp Football Analytics, formerly of ESPN Stats as well. That's an interesting way of putting it because and it's an interesting thought because like you said, you're saving on a five-year deal and a rookie contract and then, you know, second and third round picks don't cost as much, but like you said, the bill's going to be due soon on Jared Goff, Amon Ra. Certainly they're going to want to keep Sewell and, and, and Taylor Decker and others. So uh, as you are looking at needs though, and you mentioned corner, which certainly is a need, but what else, what else stands out as you look at the Lions depth chart? I think offensive line is another one that's, we've, we've got to consider it there, even though it's obviously not a need for right now. But knowing that Kevin Zeitler is on a one-year contract, that's obviously just a very a, a short-term pick. And, and, and you know another thing about the Zeitler contract, anytime a team signs someone like that to a one-year contract who's kind of on the downswing of their career, it kind of signals to me usually that that's a position they're considering in the draft, especially when it's a team that owns a late first-round pick because they don't know. You know maybe they want, say, Troy Fatanu, for example. It would be a good, good fit for them. But he's probably not going to be there. But he might be. So maybe it's a situation where they're like, well, you know, we'd like a couple guys that could be a position we draft. So let's bring in someone on a one-year contract as like a just in case. And then if he has to be our starter, fine. But if the right guy's there, that's a position we're going to address. We, we see that a lot. And I think you could point to the exact same scenario with Marcus Davenport on the defensive line. Another position they could certainly address, bringing in another pass rusher there. Uh, but they went out and they got their guy who could come in for one season, fill that hole. You know, as long as he stays healthy, he's going to be a serviceable fit there. Um, but if the right players on the board, maybe someone like Chop Robinson slides down a little bit, or maybe a Darius Robinson, they like him. You know, that could be a pick there. So the the fact that they address those two positions with one year contract guys, that's usually a tell that the team is considering addressing that for more of a with a long term pick but with one of their earlier round draft picks. I like the scenario Peter Schrager mentioned. You mentioned offensive line. Schrager today mentioned Zach Frazier going to the Lions at 29 from West Virginia. And then he probably, you're right, sits out a year or at least sits behind uh, the Ragnows and the Zeitlers um, at least for a year in Graham Glasgow. So uh, what do you, what would you think about that if the Lions want that scenario? It's, it's certainly plausible. I wonder if Frazier is a center-only prospect which those guys tend to have a little bit less value. So that would concern me a, a little bit, you know, just I, Ragnall's not an expiring contract, right? The only reason no. I bring that up is because of, yeah, because of the the injuries, right? Yeah. And, la yeah. and last year at the end of the year, let's be honest, Frank was hinting at retirement. Yeah. And then yeah. said, no, 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 I'm fine. So you never know. Yeah, you never know. And, you know, maybe if they've had conversations behind closed doors where they think that that's a much 
a, a strong possibility. Maybe they do draft someone like Frazier, knowing that he's going to play in a year. But if they, if that's, if that's not, if they haven't given that indication from Ragnar that that's imminent, I think a much safer way to address it would be like, let's say someone like Graham Barton slides down and he's available on the board. He's someone that can play multiple positions, probably all five positions. Mm -hmm. That gives you an incredible amount of flexibility, especially in their situation where you've got a bunch of guys coming up needing new contracts over the next couple of years. Plus rag now with the, the injury history, you know, who, you, you draft him knowing that he's probably not going to take a starting job right away, but it gives you a ton of flexibility of how you address the offensive line the following off season. Get into some more needs uh, with Ryan. I want to ask him about wide receiver as well for this Lions team and uh, maybe even some interior defensive linemen. We'll do that coming up next right here on a Tuesday edition of Locked on Lions. Locked on Lions is sponsored by BetterHelp. If you were thinking about a therapist, talking to somebody, really kind of getting yourself kind of out there to someone that is neutral and trying to think about an opportunity to get something off your chest, big or small, certain things can really start to get to you. It's important to let that out, especially to someone who's unbiased on your life. The best place to go and really to get that help is better help. Uh, better help. Therapy can be different for everybody, certainly, but most of us have bigger problems than our favorite sports team or what the Lions are going to do in the draft. It's important to get things off your chest every once in a while. So if you're thinking about starting up therapy, again, give better help a try. It's entirely online, designed to be flexible and suited to your schedule. Visit betterhelp.com slash NBA to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on NBA. Ryan McChrystal with us, the pride of uh, the Hawk and Hawks. We are fellow Clevelanders. We we're talking some Guardians on uh, Twitter. We're off to a good start, Ryan. I'm, I'm, I'm happy so far. I know I'm sure you are as well. Absolutely. <laughs> we'll see. See if it, can, it continues. But uh, all right, tell me about receiver at 29. Who could be there and fits for the Lions? They lose Josh Reynolds. They really need another outside guy. Obviously, Amon Ra in the interior and just what he does in the slot. But do you see a scenario where Brad Holmes goes receiver at 29? It could happen. I mean, like I mentioned, sometimes these teams that feel like they're a player or two away from a championship, right? When you get on the cusp of that getting that trophy, teams sometimes make luxury picks like that where you certainly wouldn't look at their roster and say it's the most like it's a position they absolutely must address but if you can build a elite offense that's a that's a good path to winning a championship right so i think that they could if they want to address that position in the first round they're in a pretty good position as far as who's going to be on the board because what probably fits best is a bigger outside receiver who would pair well with jameson williams and amon ross st brown a bigger guy like adani mitchell i think would be a good fit Brian Thomas is probably not on the board still at that point, but if he were, that could be a great fit. Troy Franklin, potentially, you know, he's not mentioned in the first round of conversation all that often, but he fits that mold, you know, depending on if there were an early run on receivers, maybe he enters the conversation if they feel like they really need to address that position. So th they're in a really good position if they, if they're considering adding that type of player, because those are all bigger, taller guys, all six, two or taller they can stretch the field from the outside, and that's probably what would fit best given what they've already got on the roster. Where do you have Darius Robinson? Is he an edge in your mind? Interior, certainly a Detroit guy. Could be the safe pick at 29. How do you like him? Yeah, I think how he fits is going to depend a lot team by team and what their scheme is like. I think he would be a good fit in Detroit, though, since they were pretty heavy on using four-man fronts. And so I think the way you could use someone – like Robinson would be on early downs. He probably lines up on the edge for you, but he could bring a nice boost to the pass rush. If you kick him on the inside on passing downs, bring someone else in to someone who's a little bit faster off the edge. And that could give you a nice pass rush package on like a third and seven type situation. So that flexibility that he gives you for a team that leans on a lot of four man fronts, I think he's a really nice fit there. And yeah, he'd probably be a pretty safe pick because you could, he could certainly have a role right away in the rotation. And then also, you know, like we talked about, Marcus Davenport's on a one-year contract. I believe Ali McNeil and Anwuzariki are both in the final years of their contract, I think. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah you've, you've got some needs at both positions. And so having that flexibility, like, again, having roster flexibility moving forward when you've got to make some tough decisions on who to pay in the in future years, a flexible player like that can have a lot of value. Corners. Um well, first of all, I'm a big Cooper DeGene fan. Is he going to be on the board at 29 or no way? 
I wouldn't say no way. I would say maybe 50, 50. There's a mm-hmm. bunch of teams in the twenties that could take cornerback. And I think, you know, there's probably, there's about five guys who are pretty solidly in the first round conversation. And I bet the way that those players are ranked on boards varies a lot. So I, if any, any one of them could be on the board or they could be gone 15 picks earlier, you know, it's just going to depend on who, who pulls the trigger on each cornerback. So who do you like the best? Obviously I've seen some of your mocks and, and, and look, the lions could go corner uh, after the cam Sutton situation. They've got Carlton Davis. They've got Robertson. They're bringing Mosley back. They're bringing Vildor back. Could go corner. It, it, who, who would be a home run for you at 29 for the lions? You know, it's a tough, I've got a bunch of guys graded really close together. Kool-Aid McKinstry, Terry and Arnold, Quinn and Mitchell are the three guys at the top of my board at cornerback, but I have them graded so close together that I would really, you know, let's say I were a GM. If I'm in that position where I've, I've graded these guys, I've scouted them. I would just turn to the coaching staff and be like, all right, who do you, which one of these guys do you think fits your system? So like if I'm Holmes and I've graded these guys, let's say they're the top three on my board. I'm just asking Aaron Glenn, like, you know, who do you want of these three? I, I'm signing off on all three of these guys. What fits your system? Knowing that the Lions play a lot of single high coverage, you need a pretty good athlete because there's going to be less times where you've got help over the top when you're leaning on single high coverage more often. So that makes me think that a better athlete like Terry Arnold, Quinion Mitchell, Nate Wiggins probably fits a little bit better. Although we do know that Aaron Glenn and really the, the whole organization, they really like physical players. And so Kool-Aid McKinstry, although he's not the top tier athlete, is probably the most physical of the group. So if they went that direction, it would I wouldn't cross him off the board just because he's not quite that top tier athlete because he brings that physicality that someone like Arnold or Wiggins definitely doesn't bring to the same extent. Ryan McChrystal with us from Sharp Football Analysis. Uh, love this stuff that uh, that Ryan's throwing at us. It's interesting because uh, give us some day two guys first and foremost because those are, that's really where Brad Holmes has 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 buttered his bread. I mean, obviously last year getting Sam Laporta and Brian Branch on day two. You know, Lions pick sixty first. I'm not going to tell you to crystal ball it. Give me your four round mocks. But what about a day two pick or two that you say, man, if a team gets that guy, look out. Yeah, I mean, like I said, cornerback, it would fit if they feel like that's the one piece they need. But they're typically, just looking through his history, they are, and this is part of a growing trend throughout the league, I think, is that teams feel like cornerback play is so unpredictable from year to year that sometimes drafting a cornerback, even if they've had one or two good years in college, it's hard to see how that projects. So teams like the Lions and the Eagles have tried to address that through free agency and trades and whatnot. So I, I'm kind of leaning towards they pass on cornerback in the first round and turn to some of these good players in the sec in the second round or even the third round, you know, depending on, you know, like we said, if they make a trade in the first round, maybe they have multiple picks and take up a couple of cracks at it. Someone like Ennis Rakestraw from Missouri, he sort of fits more of that uh Kool-Aid McKinstry mold of a guy who's maybe not the top tier athlete, but plays physical. And I bet that appeals to the organization knowing that they've gone after those types of players. If they want someone who's a little bit of a better athlete, possibly, but still has like a, a physical uh, aspect to his game, Kyrie Jackson out of Oregon, he's maybe more of a third round prospect, but you know, the late second round, you know, not much of a difference between second, third round guys in that range. So there's, if they pass on cornerback in the first round, I definitely expect them to address it on day two. And there's quite a few other guys, you know, Andrew Phillips from Kentucky. He's a smaller guy, but another guy who would play well if he's forced into man coverage you know, that they, that they do a decent amount there. He's one of the better athletes that would be on the board for them. It, would Phillips be a pro, uh, an option at 61? I know the lions worked him out. He was one of their 30 visits. I would say that's probably on the early end of his range that I would expect him to go, but knowing that, you know, if they don't address it in the first round and knowing that that's a need and he's someone that could become potentially come in to help right away, it, that certainly seems reasonable to me. Want to ask uh, Ryan a little bit more about free agency and the rest of the division as well as it pertains to the draft. We'll do that next with Ryan McChrystal with us from uh, Sharp Football. And Locked On Lions today brought to you by our friends at the Game Time app. Looking for Tigers tickets? Game Time is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. So you got to get a good deal. Get one on the uh, day game tomorrow when the Tigers take on the Rangers. Killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. I mentioned before, took my daughter to the 
a Pacer game on the Sunday against the Hawks. Got the tickets on game time. It was fantastic. And I love the view from your seat because you know exactly right, left, center, wherever you're sitting, you get a good feel for where that seat is. All in pricing as well. Toggling this feature shows the total up front with no surprise fees at checkout like other ticket places do. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Lockdown NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create the account, redeem the code. L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-F-L for 20 bucks off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Great having Ryan McChrystal on with us from Sharp uh, Football Analysis. We get closer to the NFL Draft, which will be right here in Detroit next Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Ryan, real fast on, on free agency, DJ Reader. You mentioned Marcus Davenport. Some others have come in. Uh, what, were you, what were your thoughts on how Brad Holmes attacked a uh, free agency here? I thought he did a fantastic job. I mean, we sort of already touched on it, bringing in a bunch of these guys on short-term contracts, which creates so much flexibility going into the draft. You know, they've got, you know, they went out and got Zettler to, to uh, fill that need at guard. Davenport fills the need on the defensive end. R- Reader, you know, a little bit of a bigger impact, most likely, you know, the fact that he's on a short-term contract, more of a reflection of his age than anything. But the fact that they don't they enter the draft without a a single spot where they absolutely must get a starter to come in and play right away it gives them so much flexibility to be patient and just sort of see what comes to them and so you know we already talked about the possibility of them trading down if that happens they're in a great spot to make that decision they won't have to reach for someone if they don't see a good value there and that's the position that you always want to be in for the draft the division of uh... You know, Vegas has set the, the win totals and the Lions are 10 and a half. The Packers are at 10 and a half. Is Green Bay that close to Detroit in your mind? I didn't know that they had, I hadn't seen those numbers. That surprises me a little bit. I think Green Bay maybe overperformed a little bit last year. You know, with Love is obviously, based on what we saw last year, he's an ascending talent, it seems like. But we've only seen it for one year, so I s- certainly have some doubts. I would, you know, if I had to pick who's going to win the division between those two, I'm certainly going to decide with Detroit, just because, you know, the the body of work is so much stronger for them as a team that's been together for a few n- years now and with a really solid trend upward over the past few seasons. So I certainly trust them more. But you know, you have to acknowledge that Love, as an ascending talent in the league, could take the next step, and maybe they take another jump forward. You look at these teams, and obviously, like we mentioned, Green Bay is kind of on the Lions' heels. Everybody's high on the Bears. I'm not as much. Uh, Caleb to Chicago, does that propel them to a playoff spot? I mean, how do, how do you kind of view what's going on in, in Chicago? I wouldn't rule it out because they have a pretty good team around him, much better than the team who holds the number one pick usually has, I would say. And the fact that they've got some good weapons and could potentially add another one after they draft him with the ninth pick, you know, if they were to add someone like Malik Neighbors or Roma Dunze with that pick, suddenly that's a pretty nice receiving core for him to work with in his first year in the league. Expectations are certainly low for me in the first year, just given the fact that he needs to learn how to dial down the hero ball play very similar to what Patrick Mahomes had to do when he entered the league. And obviously Mahomes sat for almost his entire first year to work on that just in practice with the chiefs. And so we're going to, we're going to see what happens when Williams has to figure it out for himself, most likely starting from day one, you know, that's, that's probably harder to do because the game is so much faster and trying to figure it out uh, when you're, playing behind a mediocre offensive line also it's it's going to be tricky so i don't have high expectations but you know they're a, they're a team that could surprise people because the core around him is pretty good do you think minnesota moves up to get mccarthy or one of these other quarterbacks or do they just sit where they are and, and get get Penix or somebody like that they're one of the most fun teams to talk about because there's so many scenarios for them where they're sitting and with especially with two first round picks also they could go up but I'm really intrigued by the idea of them adding Michael Penix and then also adding another wide receiver because suddenly that receiving core with one of the most polished quarterbacks to ever enter the draft, I think, in Michael Penix, the ceiling isn't as high with him as the other, some of the other guys in this draft, certainly. But he's had so much experience and he's so polished as a decision maker in the pocket. I think that's the other key factor is the offense that he played in is so much closer to an NFL style offense than any of these other guys that are being talked about in the first round. So 
to bring in someone like Penix and give him a Jordan Jefferson or a Jordan Addison and Justin Jefferson right out of the gate behind a decent offensive line in, you know, also the potential for them to add either a receiver or maybe even an, an offensive lineman with that second first round pick. That's a really intriguing option for them. But of course they could just package a bunch of picks and go get JJ McCarthy as well. I, I would say my expectation for them in 2024 goes up if they add Penix goes down if they add McCarthy, just because they're on two opposite ends of the development spectrum. Ryan, this was a, a pleasure, man. You uh, knocked it out of the park. Appreciate the time. And uh, we'll talk again soon. Thanks for having me. Always love talking draft. You got it. There is Ryan McChrystal with us from Sharp, a football analysis here on this Tuesday edition of a Lockdown Lions. Thanks for making us your first listen. And don't forget, Lockdown's NFL Mock Draft live tomorrow night, 7 Eastern streaming on the Lockdown Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. We'll see you again tomorrow.